Hey guys, I am here with Seltzer to talk. Battleborn, we have Randy here. And wow, this is going to be a cool, uh, cool um, transition for those dinosaurs. We're going to be wild. <laughs> but yeah. Well, you, um, go, you, you go from like an ancient history to far, far future. Yeah, right? Well, I guess yeah. they're doing like a blend of, of like weird future. Exactly. Old it's got that yeah. blend yeah. of like, you know, past and future. And, yeah. and Battleborn just has something from everywhere, I, right? You know, we like upturned the toy box and dumped it into the game. So we've got a, literally everything that you could imagine in there. So for everyone watching, you tell us a little bit about, uh, about Battleborn. I missed the day, right? <laughs> the day, yes, we did that <laughs> yesterday at the Gearbox show. We realized that all all of our games start with the letter B. Yeah. <laughs> Brothers and arms, Borderlands, <laughs> Battleborn, boom, 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 boom. So we were, we were making up new titles. But uh, no, uh, Battleborn is really, really exciting. Uh, when we, when we, we started the game, we wanted something that was like really high stakes but could kind of hold our imaginations. And get pretty big imaginations at Gearbox, right? So we, we went with this idea of the last star at the end of the universe. We wanted to go to extreme stakes. You know, if you're, if you're like a science nerd, you know, and you really pay attention to like cosmos and things like that, they tell you that, you know, stars have a lifetime. They, 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 they burn up and eventually they die out. And that one day, sometime way, way in the future, there, there won't be any stars left. They'll, you know, you go to like this entropy state of the universe, everything's burned out and all of that. So uh, Battleborn, we imagine that time that there's one star left. And, and then we imagine that maybe it wasn't like the natural heat death. Maybe there was a villain that accelerated that a little bit. So we, we have our great mix. We have a, a dramatic setting. We've got an awesome villain. And so you imagine that in that universe, in the far, far future, we have all these beings that could get on spaceships or, or teleport or whatever they do to, to get to the place, have all kind of uh, used, you know, surrounded the last star, almost like they're Alamo. It's the last stand, right? But these are different beings from different, you know, different, different places and different races and all of that. And they, they've had a little bit of a war-torn history themselves. So, you know, at the, at the heart of Battleborn, the, the name Battleborn, it really celebrates these heroes from among those beings who are able to set aside those, those deep-seated kind of differences that, that drove them to war in the past and recognize the one true enemy and are trying to save the last star in the entire universe. So pretty big stakes. Pretty epic. Right. So in terms of gameplay itself, I've played a good bit of Battleborn myself, awesome. which, which is awesome. You're so um, good, good. <laughs> yeah, it, It's actually really cool. The characters are awesome. Wait till we'll see it. Cool. But I mean, um, like, what's, what's, like, what is the gameplay like for someone who's like, jumping in for the first time when they jump into Battleborn? What are they going like, you know, to experience? Sure. I, I mean, it, it is a, you've played it. It's a, right. a first-person shooter at the very heart. When you get right. in, I mean, you're playing for the first-person controls. You see your arms. Or you see your guns or whatever it is. Or your swords in our game. Yeah, you know, yes. Every, every, everything that you could possibly see for your character view model, we've got, you know, a version of that. That. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it starts there, and then it kind of really goes where, where we went. Uh, it, it takes like a little bit of what we did with Borderlands, a little bit of what we've seen in other games, especially some of the MOBAs, uh, some of the other shooter games, some of the other RPGs, and kind of mushes it all up. We, we love a Gearbox to just kind of put it all up in the stew and stir it together and see what comes out. And, and Battleborn is certainly no exception there. Uh, at the end of Borderlands 2, we were really excited. One of my favorite things to do in Borderlands 2. You guys have played oh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. right? And it was true in the pre-sequel and, and in the Handsome Collection and all that as well. But uh, I worked a lot with the character designers in Borderlands, and we loved making the talent trees. And one of the things that was really cool as a developer, you know, is we have the, we can put in a code and I got reset talent tree, make a new one. So you get to try all of like the, the end Thanks. extreme abilities. All oh, that's cool. That combination is that combination is cool. And, and when we started Battleborn, we're like, you know what? What if we could take that experience? And make that into like a match level link. So instead of over, you know, 30, 40 hours, slowly unlocking the talent tree and getting that great kind of standard RPG growth that we've experienced in so many games over the years, what would happen if we did that in like a quick session and give you that kind of same experience that we have kind of as insiders of really getting to play with all of that? And we, we saw some other games, you know, certainly the MOBAs were doing kind of similar type of things with very fast and match growth. And we kind of took several of those ideas and mashed them together and ended up with this Helix system that, that you played yes, with. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably take some looks at later. Yeah, it's cool. Like it's Level up quickly. You're choosing like one of two skills and how they're going to interact with like not only your skills but the skills of the fellow players you're playing with, and it's really yeah. cool. So yeah, absolutely. I, I think yesterday at the Gearbox panel we were we, we were throwing out some some math and, and you know you, you have ten levels every time you, you you're in a match. You, know, right. you start at level one, you play level ten, and that's true whether you're playing competitively or you're playing in our story missions. You know you're playing, and this is what's kind of weird. You know you play a lot of FPS campaign games and you're you know you, you you get progress by you know I just got a new weapon or here's the grenade launcher, here's the part where I get the rocket launcher. You know Battleborn, you know you you pick from one of the 25 characters are going to have it released, and you can pick every time you play a different map, a different level, you know, even through a, you know, a playthrough of the story once. And, and you, you're, you're starting with that new character at level one, and you level up 10 times in the course of the mission, and every time choose between two abilities. Uh, so there's like, even with just that, that's where we stop, there's 1,024 combinations per character, and those combinations Jeez. can be pretty different, and they synergize in different ways and all of that. When you multiply that times five team members, yeah, or times 25 characters and five team members, you start to get up to, you know, 
you know, in the in the tens of thousands, the millions of combinations. And then we've got some, you know, our typical gearbox tricks. We've got some 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 loot and some gear that will pop in there, uh, and some different ways to customize your character and tune it even further as you play along. Uh, I think when we got all of our numbers together, where we're sitting right now, we're we're looking at like 49 billion combinations of the way you Jeez. can build out your character and team. So it's you know seven unique combinations for every person on the planet Earth. So you can find your seven. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so what are we checking out here? Oh yeah. Oh. All right, cool. Now this is uh, this is one of the early trailers. This is kind of a visualization. We're looking at a kind of a fly through our universe and just showing you uh, you know a little bit of cool galactic stuff. Is there all the stars dying? Yeah, yeah. You, you see that, and we, we get into this the the last system and the last star in the entire universe. What you see on screen right now is so the name of our our star is Solus S O L U S and. And well, now we're going to look at one of the one of the planets there. Solus has several planets around it, so we have five factions in our game that the story centers around and the characters come from. And we can we can talk about those later. But they're they're kind of at war and kind of together. And you can see some themes. You know, we have like uh, you're playing right now is, is Oscar Mike. That's what we're seeing on the camera right there. Uh, if you look at the bottom left corner, you can even see kind of a, a quick silhouette for him, what he looks like in third person. He's kind of this great everyman, modern soldier type of guy, assault rifle. And he's really, I mean, his name is Oscar Mike. Right. You know. <laughs> So, well, yeah. I am Oscar Mike. You know, he's got the crazy missile like superpower too. Oh right? my gosh! Yeah, 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 he turns his gun sideways. He does this laser targeting. <laughs> this, this, yeah, it's, it's like orbital bombardment, which is just nuts. It's right? absolutely sick. Is that his, one it. of his final moves? That you have to work towards level ten. Yeah, yeah. And so at level five, all of our characters <laughs> unlock their their ultimate ability, right? And it's usually something pretty big and epic and awesome. It's different for every character and all that. Oscar Mike is a Oscar Mike's is an airstrike, and in in the Helix system, you can do a couple of things to even change that up. Like when you first get it. It's this big, broad, wide barrage of an airstrike. Uh, you can take a, what we call an augmentation, one of the choices on the Helix later, and you can you can change it up so that it, uh, everybody in the airstrike gets slowed. You know, so if you have a wave of enemies running at, you can slow them down, and then your snipers can pick them off. And then another one, which is completely different, it turns it into like an orbital laser, and it makes it really, really, really <laughs> narrow, but it like it increases the damage by three or four times. So if you can ever land it on an enemy, it just eviscerates them and just uh, turns them to dust. Oh, there yeah, you go. Like from orbit. <laughs> Though, right? Oh. I mean, oh, it's really awesome. So you're seeing here. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, one of the uh, story missions that we uh, we went to last year, uh, and this is on the the planet Tempest. The, the Tempest is, is kind of the home world of our, our faction called the Degenerate Faction, and they're kind of our uh, Sith Lords, Evil Empire, Perfect. Space Vampires. You know, whatever you want. You got you got to have one of course. You got to have Space Vampires. And uh, they've got a really interesting history. You'll, you'll see if you've seen some of the other trailers, you'll probably look at it in the game in a little bit. We've got this great villain that comes from them, a guy named Rendane, who uh, was originally kind of working with all the factions, and kind of at the last hour has, has changed his mind and has sided with this dark, evil enemy empire called the Morelsi, who have come from another dimension. And they're the ones who are actually speeding up the Death of Stars. They're, they're, they're what we call darkening them. Those, no one's really sure what's happening with them, whether they're they're being destroyed or they're being sucked away or stolen or whatever. You can see, uh, in fact, we're fighting. Uh, this is, now the character you're playing right there is not a real. This is a Rindy. This is our Chaos Witch. She's my favorite. I actually. love the yeah, four the hands, hands on the screen. The <laughs> this is like this is so different. Just when you look at this game versus any other game out right now. Well, we, we we had a challenge early on. You know, we love first-person games, and there's something so immersive about that first-person presentation. But the difference between like first and third is you don't get to see these really cool characters all the time. You know, we had the same struggle with Borderlands, and we did a lot of cool things in Borderlands. When you go to menus and all, you can see your character and all of that. But we wanted to be sure in our game that what is presented in that view in first person that you're seeing all the time looks awesome and looks distinct and looks unique for the character and really shows it off. And Arendi is one of my favorite examples of that. Here you see another example of, uh, again, another one of the environments. So Echinar is, is actually the home of the Eldred faction. They're kind of our nature magic faction. If you've seen Thorn, our, our elven archer, uh, we've, uh, we've, I think, announced a, a care, little character called Boulder, who's a dwarf uh. with an axe in his shoes. We have the elf and the dwarf. I mean, we have all oh, the archetypes okay. in this game, right? But uh, Echinar is, is normally this big, green, lush, jungly planet. We might see some views later, but this is actually kind of one of the, 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 the outback of, of Echinar. This is a desert map. And you see, uh, there's some, uh, of course, like every, you know, every great sci-fi planet, we've got these ancient ruins of civilizations that were there tens of thousands or million years ago. These are actually called the Astanti and figure in. And I, I probably, this is probably the only time you're ever going to hear that word spoken. I don't know if we even talk about it in game. It's like a, it's a secondary <laughs> lore thing that if you, if you're a lore nerd right. and really like to do that, we've got some of that buried around the game so you can dig into the character of the story and the universe and all of that and really find this stuff. And you guys always make sure to take care, like make sure that's well established and it's deep enough for someone, for someone who wants to 
dive into there, it's there for them. I, I'm yeah, I, I'm the guy. This is kind of a dream project for me because <laughs> I'm finally getting to nerd out all my. You know, I grew up playing D and D and building these big worlds and all that. I've got like this three or four hundred event timeline back on my desk oh, at man. work. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, the title of it is the, the, the history of the end of all things. <laughs> you know, oh. and I've got like 20,000 years of history in our universe and all that. Not with all That's the guys at Gearbox right there back there rolling their eyes at me. No. Well, you know this more <laughs> intimately than anyone. I mean, is there is there part of the story that you feel personally connected to that, that you feel like, well, oh, obviously gosh. all of it, but, but what did you put in for yourself? Oh, my gosh. You know, uh, there's, there's some really cool parts. Uh, um, I think one of the so every character you know we've talked about this several times can it feels like the character of their own game it could be a you know a headliner character into the game and and I've poured so much of my my heart and soul and and so has our writer Lindy and and our our, our all of our designers in, in doing that but uh, there's a couple of characters that are really kind of personally meaningful to me I, the one called Phoebe uh, Phoebe if you've seen her is she's the the She's kind of the, the little princess she's in our our faction the Last Light Consortium which are kind of our a uh, high technical robot Tron steampunky wielding warmongers. They build all the war machines for the universe and sell them to the highest bidder and all that. And Phoebe has this great, you know, kind of Victorian hoop skirt and wields oh, these, oh. these scimitars and these blades and all of that. And she can throw them. Her, her sword, uh, her sword, and this is one of those great things, one of the great little tricks I get, you know, being creative director. I get one of these every once in a while. Uh, the sword is named Adonexus and actually uh, named by my daughter. She had a character and had a oh, this really sword and, and so he came up with that later. And uh, I, I love that. You know, I get to be able to insert there, but it's a big floating mage blade. And, and so I, I, sh I get to kind of share that with my daughter and my family. It's kind of our, our little secret and all that. So that's really cool. Ombra is another character that's really awesome. When you, if you're looking at her Good on the screen tree. right now, yeah. Oh, that skill tree looks yeah. beautiful, yeah, yeah, by the cool. way. That's yeah. so intuitive. It's the helix, and it's, it's really easy. Like, if you're playing on the console, right, it's just like D-pad up, it brings it up, and it's just right or left bumper. So we really work to optimize that for quick gameplay choices. Uh, it was one of the things we figured out. We, we actually started a lot more complex in the very early part of the project and realized when you're making a shooter game, we wanted the gameplay to be really accessible and fast. You've got your hands on that. Right, yep, yep. Hopefully so, you're, no, you're... No, it was yeah, a lot of fun, and yeah. it was cool just playing with the other guys and kind of running through. It's like, it's just like, upgrade, upgrade, fun, cool guys. And it was just like a great experience from like start to end. There was like never any point where it was like, uh, all right, like, you know, it was just like yeah. constant, like, you know, fun. Well, Good. can you tell me a little bit about your, your inspiration? Because this is an FPS, but it looks like and, and kind of plays like a MOBA. <laughs> Well, you know, th there are definitely some MOBA elements in it, you know, in the mix. There's also some MMO elements in it. There's some tower defense elements. There's a lot of there's a lot of Borderlands influence in it. You can see kind of all the things mixed together. It, it, it'd be, you know, a lot of people call it a MOBA. We definitely have some synergy with that on the leveling up. We've got, we even have a, we just dove into it. There's a company called Minion Robotics. That's a subsidiary of the LLC that makes all the little minions. You'll see a lot more of those as we, we show and talk about competitive gameplay in the coming months. Uh, but. Uh, you know, the, 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 the inspiration, MOBA really is leveling up, but you almost see like here when you're playing co-op against the team, you see our characters working together, and we, we almost went back to MMOs to look at like the archetypes. When you're playing through story missions, we definitely have the defender type of characters, all your tanks. We have support characters. Uh, Miko is a great example. Ombra that we saw there for a little bit. Uh, even though she can throw out these big sun spheres and balls and damage enemies, she can set up really great healing pools and all of that. And then right. we, we have a, a, a Benedict's a great example here of our killer characters. Benedict is awesome because uh, we, we codenamed internally Rocket Hawk. When we first uh, conceived him, <laughs> right, and he is, he's a hawk with a rocket. But when we first came up with Benedict, we wanted to kind of kind of dive into some of those classic shooter tropes. And like, well, rocket jumping yep. is really cool. Right. So give a dude a rocket. Well, what, what can we do that's cooler than rocket jumping? We'll make him a hawk. Give him wings so that when he's up in the air. You guys just went wild. Right. right. <laughs> Were you guys just slamming back drinks like, he's going to fly, Jump. but he's going to have gonna a fly. rocket. It's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's funny you say that. It's kind of how it works at Gearbox. You know, we get on a wild, a wild tear. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Yeah, in fact. Oh, man. But uh, Melka is one of our uh, our principal story NPCs. She's really cool. She's a good mix between kind of uh, ranged combat and she has a great melee blade. It's a switch back and forth, but a lot of fast movement, you know, a lot of up and down. She can jump and then stealth while she's mid in air. It's, it's awesome and competitive. A really great way oh. to troll people. Can you tell us about more like what people can expect from like the, st like the single player or the, I'm sort of the story elements, like in terms of like, you know, is sure. it gonna be like a, like, will people be playing through the same stage a lot to kind of like grind for like cool loot or will it be like, you know, like a, a new game plus kind of experience? What's that experience gonna be like for but players? It, it sounds kind of weird to say it, and I know other developers have made this claim too, but we, we've kind of tried to support every way you could possibly think to play this game, right? If you consider, like, the awesome 25 characters we have as a base, right. we wanted to continue just to layer different ways. So if you're a competitive guy, man, we've got that. We've got three modes. We've got maps on that, a lot in the different times and different, different objectives and all that, different ways to play. In story, I think we've got something that, that – 
that is both familiar and a little bit unique, right? There certainly right. is kind of a, 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 an initial campaign. There's a story that goes on in that that you, you kind of you know play, play a prologue mission and you're gonna get the setup for the universe and you, there's a there's, there's kind of a, a moment that like I, I've won this chapter, right? But every mission has been designed so that it, it's its own thing. It's almost like we almost, in eternally, we call it almost like TV episodes, right? Interesting. So you play a mission, and you can come back and play it. It's got a start. It's got a conclusion. So they're all about 30, 40 minutes thereabouts. You're playing with your, you know, either by yourself or friends, however you want to play. Uh, you can play it all through single player if you just don't want to mess with anybody. Right. You know, up to five-player co-op. In fact, if, if you like those games where you can you, you find a party online and just you like to, you know, enter like Dungeon Finder or random matchmaking, We've got that built into the game, too. So oh, really? I, I'm going to play five-player co-op. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to find my team. We're just going to make new friends online and all that. Or you can, you can you know, make your party beforehand. However you want to play is great. But 30 to 40-minute episodic missions. But we're doing some things in there to, to, try to try to be sure that the replay is, is, is there and fun. It's going to be kind of the same story elements. Right. But we're doing some things with difficulty and the way you score. We've already seen already some of the guys that have come and played the game at conventions have come and gotten, like, this is my best. This is the most kills I've gotten Phoebe. Yeah. I dare anybody else to get more kills with Phoebe. <laughs> either this and all that. So we know that that's going to be a big deal. In fact, we've, we've even since the convention circuit this year, we've added a couple of features and oh, scoring and stuff wow. like that to respond to what, how we're seeing people play and enjoy the game. And I, I'm hoping we're going to get more of a chance to do that as we as we travel along. Very cool. Very cool. Fantastic. Uh, how about the uh, multiplayer? I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the competitive side. Uh, you know, oh, I, we, I, I cannot wait to get people in the competitive side of this game. Oh. You know, when, we, when we announced the game like early last summer and, and had the cover with Game Informer and those guys really helped us out there and, and, and really gave us a, a, a great first look, we, we talked almost exclusively about competitive at that time. They actually came in and played a mode with us. We called it incursion mode. We still have that. That's one of our, our three shipping modes. But we have three different ways to play. It's 5v5 competitive. We support matchmaking. We'll, we'll probably, uh, you know, probably do some skill-based matchmaking to keep it even and fair in there. Right. But Man, it is it is so cool to get in and play. It's it's objective objective based team. I mean, you have all the words, right? I mean, Randy Pritchard has this great. <laughs> you remember the Twitter post? Yeah, he has yeah, this yeah. Twitter post where he's like I all the words, words to describe the game. <laughs> it, it's it's weird, you know. People laughed at him like that, but almost all those all those words, in fact, in that post are true. And it's hard to describe our game sometimes. In fact, we hear a lot of, of people talk and say, I, "I have no idea. I read stuff, or I heard you talk about it. it just as like you mixed everything together." And then people get their hands on like. I understand it now. I got it. It all comes moment. together, right? Well, you guys sound really enthusiastic about competitive. Does that mean you're also thinking about possible spectator modes and smaller, maybe training modes, anything like that? Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, we, we, you know, it, it's so hard to say intentionally or am I going to esports game because it really sets the bar different. I mean, at, at Gearbox, we really prioritize first, first the fun for customers, be sure that you guys are having a good time. But we have thought about competitive since the beginning, you know, because we didn't do much competitive at all in Borderlands. You could duel and some other stuff, but it wasn't really balanced that way. It was a very different experience. And so we knew adding a competitive element to make that actually grow and have legs and for people to really enjoy it, we have to take some care with balance and we have to look at how the characters are, you know, are, are balanced and how they position. And man, we have flying characters and ranged characters and melee characters, so that's been a big chore, but I, I think it's working out. I think, and I can't wait for people to get their hands on it and try it because I really do think it's a unique experience, you know, even among the other shooters and the, 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 even the hero shooters that are coming out now. I think we've got a little different taste and a, a mix on that. And I think you take, you know, just the wild creativity that we have and the, the, the dramatic art style. Scott Kester, our art director, is amazing. The yeah, is totally brilliant. Definitely shows. And, uh, uh, but we've got, yeah, we've got three modes, Incursion, which is kind of a longer one. It's, you know, you're, you're killing these big spider sentries. You've seen some levels, right. you know, team versus team. Uh, you've got a, a, another one that's kind of a, a, a variation on the standard capture. We call it capture mode, and you're capturing and gaining these shards, and you're building little minion stations up and, and, and doing that. And then you've got uh, a meltdown mode, which is actually my favorite. And it's this weird mode that you play. It's, it's totally a score-based mode, right? Right. But you're, uh, you're really trying to take these little minions, you know, and, and shepherd them through these gates. And they're, I, I, I don't I don't want to spill too much on that right now. It's amazing. It's really cool, and it's the mode that internally we've played as, as le even internal leagues at Gearbox a couple of times and tested out how it feels to do that. And it's 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 awesome. Where do the ideas for these like modes come from? I mean, like who's who who's that, who does that? You know, it, it can come from anywhere at Gearbox. We really like to pride ourselves on the fact that that our designers have a lot of leeway to explore and to iterate and play. So, you know, we have a, a we have a super talented team of game designers and level designers and, and artists. We even have some art. We, and then it's funny. We have one guy that, in fact, that does a lot of work on Incursion Mode right now that I think started at Gearbox as an environment artist. Wow. Came over to Battleborn. He's made several of our characters. Jet Serra's his name. And, and uh, I, he's even, you know, now holding up the weight of a couple of modes. So we have some guys who are like, I just, I'm interested in this, and I'm going to do it, and, and they do it, and, and if they do great at it, you know, 
we, we like to throw a lot of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Right. And it's, that's been a lot of the iterative development for Battleborn, finding what we think is the most fun and what we think that, that the audience and, and our great fans will think are, are really, really fun too. So. A lot, a lot wow. of awesome stuff. Truly there. a team effort, like in every respect, it sounds like. It sounds like everyone can, like, you know, absolutely. put, like, no matter what their role, they can contribute to how this game kind of, like, you know, how it, like, shapes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, again, we, we love to hire creative, inspired people and then give them enough you know, rope to hang themselves. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, enough enough rope just to. Uh, I'll stop with the rope analogy now. <laughs> no, because you that's know what? Going keep it, keep it going. <laughs> you already talked about how fun it is there, and it really comes across in the games that you guys make. I mean, this is, it's not just a game, like, a lot of times I sit down, especially for competitive of games yeah. like, I gotta grind, I gotta right. learn, I gotta study, and this just looks really fun. It's yeah. very approachable, and that was something that was really important to us. We, we were actually, the, the early, early battle born was a lot more of what you're talking about. It's esoteric <laughs> and it's weird, and I think we've just continued to simplify and simplify and simplify without hopefully losing some of that cool uh, customization and depth that we've talked about. This character seems insane, though. The like the robotic arms, like now Reina. It's not quite robotic. She's oh, got she's, she's got a, like, almost oh, like a Nintendo Power Glove oh, on her left oh, hand. Right. She's the commander of our rogue faction and is is honestly internally one of the favorite support characters we have right now. She's not a healer. She's a shielder. Uh, but she's also a debuffer. Like you can see her occasionally. You'll watch her. She can she can mark an enemy, uh, and it it de debuffs them so that they take more damage from any source. And then she has this great quick over shield and this big bubble shield. I honestly think that when we get into competitive for this game, that every competitive team that, that is really wanting to compete in Battleborn is going to have an Anchor Reina player because she's just she's amazing. Oh wow, she's already kind of been pinned as like an essential. That's she's, awesome. Yeah, she, yeah, she's right now. You know, my, my, my tier one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll engage that debate really soon with everybody. <laughs> well, this is coming out early 2016. Are you guys yes. going to do like a big like a launch tournament? Oh, so, yeah, you, we, what? Tournament? What we'll, we'll, we'll see. I would love to. <laughs> you know, we 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 would definitely love to explore tournament support. Very very, very soon and all of that. We want to see, I, I, I hope people like this game as much as we, we play it internally at Gearbox still every day. But yeah, February 9th is the release date. Uh, we are trucking toward that date right now. I uh, probably it, shouldn't even be here because we're all, and we've got a huge team back in the office that really are spending long hours and all the blood, sweat, and tears right now to make this game great for our fans. I bet. Wow. Um, so Randy, man, this thing seems incredible. And just like, the, it can tell with the passion <laughs> that you guys are putting into it. We well, talked to Randy Pitchford a few weeks ago and oh, you saw he's also, awesome. yeah, yeah, he and I are too. both wow. kind of, woo! I just imagine the entire team is just, you guys, just everyone has like the so same energy. So we gotta energy. separate the Randys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you should never interview. I mean, it's probably bad. It would explode or something. Oh, your equipment. <laughs> but do you, do you personally have like a favorite character or is, was that her? Oh man, you're you're asking me to pick my, between my children. You I know, mean, and, I mean, your children are right there. there I think. Can yeah. you choose right uh, now a favorite? Phoebe's awesome, but honestly, if I have a go-to of the ones we've announced, right. my, my favorite character is actually one that we haven't talked about yet right now. But oh. we'll, we'll talk about that soon, but I'll put that, that teaser out there. Is that beyond the 25 that she's, are coming out? No, no, she's in the 25, she's but the we've, 25. Only, we've only talked about like 11 or 12 of the 25, so she's in that back half that we're, we're going we're gonna to announce at some point. But. Are you guys going to conquer the rest of those characters <laughs> by February 6th? That seems absolutely insane to me. Just if it was just like, you know, whole home character, but every character is just like this, like, entire fully like, know, fleshed man. out like you know creative. we've got we've got some plans that, and you're going to see us continue to pick up the pace and what we reveal about the game coming up to, to we've got a lot of characters to cover but out of the ones we've got right now Arindi we talked about her earlier the forearm yeah. chaos which I'm such an irresponsible competitive player I like to run in and blow up you know, whatever <laughs> my teams do and I just hope the healers back to me <laughs> so she's really my go to right now oh uh, yeah she's my favorite too just love yeah. that yeah I want to play oh. the Rocket Eagle, Rocket Hawk. Benedict. Rocket Hawk. Benedict. Benedict. The Rocket Hawk. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's he's cool. You can get up in the air and then rain death down from below. <laughs> I haven't seen really him cool. from like a third person perspective or as, as another player. Is he like actually like a hawk? Yes, dude. Yeah, like, he has he has like two awesome wings. One of them is kind of wounded a little bit because we can't like fly forever. You know? Sure, that, that right. Would, you know, break things, but uh, yeah, I mean he he does that and you know his wings sweep up when he gets airborne. He can actually do a move where he launches himself in the air or he can rocket jump into the air or he rocket jump and then launch himself. So he, lots of combinations, but he has a move where he can like sweep his wing backs and actually knocks players back and competitive and all. So it's it's really cool and a lot of ways to play it. But yeah, he is fully he has wings and arms and legs. So I guess he's kind of a six-legged being, you know, when you oh, want to, you know, six-limbed <laughs> being. Well, so. you talk about what he can do in competitive. Are there going to be things that you can do in the story mode that aren't analogous to competitive play, mm -hmm. or, or is there is the gameplay very similar? Good question. There, there's a little bit of similarity, but but certainly when you when you get into uh, get into the story mission, we do a little bit more with mini bosses and bosses and big enemies and some variety that you just won't have, you know. In competitive, you get a little bit of that, like when you're taking down a, a spider sentry on an opposing team. But we've got some bigger threats. 
threats than that. And hopefully once we get into the higher difficulty tiers of that, there will be some really good challenge. I think when you start to play in our game on, on our advanced or our hard modes, uh, you're really going to have to pick your team carefully. You're going to have to think about that. Again, we're just starting to tease the gear system that we have in. It's a, it's, again, it's a, it's a loot-based system. It's procedural. You can get all this gear. We've got some – you talk about differences. Mm -hmm. We have some right now. Uh, some story mission specific gear so we can do crazier things there than the competitive we want to keep balanced story mission we're kind of embracing a little bit more of what we did with Borderlands to be sure that we're we're really finding the fun while keeping kind of that that I'm testing myself against someone else I scored more than you I did better than you so, so. does the does the gear carry over to the competitive right. at all you can, you can use, so we have a general uh, general set of gear that can be used okay. in either mode. You know, if you, you find a good piece of gear, awesome. And that can be used in competitive or story missions in a spe specific subset right now. And again, this is this is a little pre-launch, but this is where we are right now. It's feeling pretty cool. Right. But that story mission gear, you can only use in story mode. And it, it again, it can be like a smart bomb. You know, I want to nuke all the enemies in, in the visible range and all that. You can't really do that in competitive oh, yeah. without <laughs> people getting really, really whiny yeah. about it. Yeah, so. that wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> How much flexibility are you guys playing in, t in terms of like aesthetically, like you know, for characters in like competitive, like you know, like different skins or different like you know hairstyles yeah. or whatever? Like uh, right now, we're we're definitely supporting a, a, a two big kind of buckets of, of customization right now on on aesthetics. We're certainly doing the skin thing. We did it in Borderlands. We're going to do the similar thing here. Uh, we've got some plans to do you know some some cool ones even even uh, even further on. We'll see how far we can get by by release. Uh, but uh, we also do the taunts, the little animations. You've seen a couple right. of them, like if you've seen the clip of like Wrath, our our generate swordsman <laughs> who. Like licks his sword. <laughs> he's got a, he, and they have different, different, the other places. Like one of his things he says is he licks the sword and the sword is mine now. <laughs> oh, man. But it is a bad idea. You know, it, it, it's like that. Tongue so, regrets it later. <laughs> right, right. So we, we definitely have that way. Uh, we, we think we've got that uh, a pretty good solution for that in competitive right now. We do some things with your outlining and stuff that you've seen in other games and all that to be sure you know who the enemy team is right. while still letting you express yourself. But uh, we, we, we plan on doing some support for the game post-launch to be sure that all those those decisions play out and are cool. And, you know, if we have to make some changes, we, we have the ability to, to do that some. So we're definitely going to watch that community close and want to support it. And I've got a lot of love for, for online games community so it should be really cool I, I can't wait for that part of the ride oh no I, I bet just seeing that like feedback in the community just must be like the most like you know it's, we're getting, satisfying thing we're right just a little right, right now, now you know I, and i love talking to the guys, guys like you that have played like, at a convention and hearing about it and like oh it was so cool this is great this is this was not so great and i'm like i could fix that you know <laughs> wow so cool. uh, for the people who are here at the event who are going to have a hands-on time yeah. with it and for some of the people who already have where can they interact with you and give you this feedback cool i'm 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 Really today, uh, at PAX today, tomorrow, and tomorrow, I'll be hanging around the Battleborn booth over on the hall. It's it's hard to miss. We've got Montana, our big guy, and we have like a, I think it's a 20 foot tall statue of Montana. It's wow. really hard to to miss it over right. there. By the so, way, your cosplayers are so phenomenal. I know they're yeah. so talented. It's so surreal, but they are amazing. It's been great. I've gotten pictures with all of them. They all, all look at me like, <laughs> "Why are you touching me?" You know? <laughs> You're like, "I created you." <laughs> I remember when you didn't have a name. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're my creation. Oh, so, that's great. But well, I'll be over there hanging out. Come, yeah, come say hi. You know, pat me on the back or, or punch me in the face, whatever you need to do. Let's, let's, let's talk about Battleborn. Touch him. How about for the folks at home who aren't here? Like, where can they go to find out more about Battleborn? Sure, uh, we've got several different things. We certainly have a there's a, a, a at Battleborn a Twitter account. Right. We certainly have a Twitch uh, Twitch page for Battleborn that you can see these and some other things that we've done on there. So thank you guys for, for being awesome with us, partnering right. and help the game being good. We have a Battleborn Facebook page, and you can post questions and stuff in the comment stream there. And then at Gearbox, we have a Gearbox Battleborn forums, and I I, I hang out on our forums where I'm an old school dude, and I hang out in forums. <laughs> I'm I'm not quite hip with the kids, I'm you know, with whatever. You there. But uh, uh, that's a place I've, I've enjoyed getting to know. We've got some really great, a really great starting community there. And, and uh, they come and ask questions, and I answer everything that I can before the marketing ninjas descend and, and oh, you know, stab like, me through the chest. Not supposed to say that. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> well, but that's awesome. Randy, thank you so much. I think, My uh, pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Seltzer and I had a great time, like, you know, learning more about the game. And I I'm can't so wait to, excited. I can't cool. wait to hear more about the competitive side, especially that new mode that you mentioned with, uh, like, you know, like, kind of, like, hurting the meltdown. Yeah, yeah, Watch meltdown. for it. It's oh. going to be great. It's going to be wait. great. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. And awesome. All right, guys, sit tight. We'll be right back with some more packs live.